welcome to this episode in our Sitecore Cortex series. In this video, Alistair Dennys is going to explain how tasks work in the Cortex Processing Engine. Task agents execute tasks. In the Cortex Processing Engine, we can have two different kinds of tasks. There is a deferred action and a distributed task. The deferred action is a single piece of code that needs to be run, and it will be run on a single task agent. There's no data source, but you can inter still integrate with other things like external services. A distributed task, however, uses a data source and can be distributed across a number of different task agents. The ability to distribute the distributed task does depend on the data source. So as long as the data source supports splitting, then the task can be distributed. Tasks can also have dependencies, which allow the creation of what we see here with these task chains, which can have a fan in fan out effect. The direction of the arrows here is the direction of the dependency. So you can see their task B depends on task A. A single task cannot run until all of its dependencies and the dependencies dependencies have run. So for example, task C here cannot run until both task A and task B have been completed. Likewise, task E can't run until A, B, C, and D have all been completed. We can also see that C and D both depend on the same task so they can run in parallel. A task agent has a particular processing cycle. It will start off at rest. When it wakes up, the first thing it will do is check if there are any distributed tasks currently in progress. And if there are, it will join in, assuming that the data source support splitting and allows additional agents to join in. If there are no distributed tasks in progress, then it will check if there are any distributed tasks that are pending. If there are, it will take one of those. If not, it will check if there are any deferred actions. If it finds a deferred action, it will execute that. If not, it goes back to rest. Now the important thing to note here is that there is a priority to these operations. So it's quite likely that if you had a, have a very big distributed task in progress, all of your task agents will eventually end up processing that task. And if you add a deferred action in at that moment, it may not be processed for a while until one of the task agents finishes off its slice of work from the distributed task and is freed up to go and uh, execute the deferred action. The idea being that we try to complete tasks as quickly as we possibly can. Tasks themselves are composed of a number of different elements, and these elements allow us to extend the processing engine. The data source, for example. We can implement a new data source by simply implementing the iDataSource interface. You'll notice here that the interface is a generic interface. The type parameter there is the type of the entity which we're returning from the data source. We only have a single method on this interface, create batch enumerator async. And this is used to return the elements of the data source that are then passed onto the workers. Out of the box, we have four data sources that allow us to extract the data from XConnect. There is the contact data source, the interaction data source, and then we have search varieties of both of them. The search varieties allow us to execute a search query. So rather than returning all of the contacts or all of the interactions, we can filter them down to, for example, all of the contacts that have visited the site in the last week. We also have the distributed worker. Here's the interface here. You'll note that this is also a generic interface. And the type, the generic type here, should match the type of the data source so that we, ex we know the uh, type of the entity that we're accepting in here for work. We've got one method here, process batch async. So it is expected that the data source will be returning elements in, a, in batches, so we can distribute each batch to a different worker. Contrasting that with the deferred worker, the deferred worker is much simpler. It doesn't have a data source, so we don't expect any input parameters. So we simply have a single method, run async, and we do whatever we need to do inside that method. And then we have the I model. The I model is much more complex. And as I mentioned before, the model here is a ML model as opposed to an XConnect domain model. So we have members on this interface which are geared towards 
ML tasks. The projection property is used to project data. Projection in ML is a common task. It's used for extracting data in one format and transforming it into a different format. Many different ML algorithms expect the data in a specific format, so projection becomes quite important in transforming data. There are also two methods there, train async and evaluate async. The first one is to train an ML model, and the second one is to evaluate against that trained model. You'll also note that the interface here is also generic. So the type that we're passing in there should match the type that the data source emitted and the worker has processed. All of these elements also support passing options into them. To support accepting options, an element should accept a read-only dictionary of string string. The options are defined when we register the task with the engine. This allows us to reuse our different task elements without having to go and change the code, because we could, for example, be passing in the name of the table that we want to be operating on in storage, as opposed to fixing it as a static. I'd like to provide you a quote now from our chief data scientist, Marcos Perez Guimaraes. As a data scientist, I need effective access to the data and the ability to use the tool of my choice for processing. If we have a look at a typical task chain, this task chain is used to train an ML model. It consists of three separate tasks. We have projection, merge, and train. Projection and merge often go hand in hand. A projection task is a dis distributed task, and it's going to distribute the data out to a number of different tables inside storage. Merge is then required to pull those all back into a single table so it's easy to use. Tying this back to Marcos's quote, this is our effective data access. The projection task will be using the data from the data source and performing the projection over it. And this is a distributed task, so we'll be doing it at scale. And then the training task is our integration to ML tooling. So we can use the tool of our choice here. In particular, it's the model that allows us the integration to the ML tooling. Although we have integration with Microsoft ML Server out of the box, there's no need to use this. You're free to use whatever ML tooling you would like and integrate it through the model. Thanks so much for listening. Stay tuned for more episodes in our Cycor Cortex series.